Hey guys, welcome to my top 20 designer fragrances for winter 2012. Um, this video, always one of my favorites. I love my cold weather scents. Um, they're daring, they're different. Uh, my sweet tooth's back, so all you uh, sweet uh, fragrance lovers out there, uh, you're going to be happy. My sweet tooth's back, but I still got uh, a lot of newcomers in this top 20 list, and of course, old heads. Um, it's still winter out here. I, I wish I could just take the camera and show you how much snow we got on the ground. So it's still winter time now, um, so I'm not absolutely late on this top 20 list, but I really want to get 2012 in the rearview mirror. Um, so let's uh, tackle this top 20 designer list for 2012. Again, this is my personal opinion. This is my personal collection. Um, it does not mean one fragrance is better than another just because it's not in the list or the ranking. It just depends on my mood, how much, how much I wear it, how much I'm, I'm grabbing this fragrance from day to day. Um, it just lets you know what my taste is uh, from year to year. So it does not mean that one fragrance is better than another. Uh, but it just gives you like a little gauge of, of what I'm wearing. Um, so let's take a look at my top 20 designer list for 2012. We got a newcomer. We're starting it off number 20. A newcomer to this list. His first time in a top 20 list. So good for him. I haven't reviewed this fragrance actually yet on my channel. But hopefully it will. Um, this one discontinued from the house of Aquilina. It's not the most manly fragrance or uh, manly bottle in the world. But... <laughs> It's called Choco Lovers, guys. Uh, Choco Lovers with little uh, red hearts all over the bottle. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Um, this one reminds me of a chocolate chip cookie. Always. Um, a chocolate lover's dream. A uh, cho chocolate chip cookie of the fragrance game. That's what I call it. Uh, reminds me of, of course, chocolate chip cookie. Uh, sometimes even Nutella because there's, I believe there's a hazelnut. Yeah, there's a huge hazelnut uh, note in this fragrance. So it kind of reminds me of Nutella's chocolate with a little pinch of citrus at the start. Um, if you like Chocolate Greedy from Maltal, um, that kind of has like that hot chocolate powdery combo to it. Um, this one's a good substitute to it. It used to be a cheapie, I think they discontinued it. I mean, it used to be like $15 a bottle, now it's going sky high. But if you find a retailer that has this available, it's gonna be under 20 bucks. Um, very good for the price, longevity and projection, very, very good. Almost excellent on this guy. Um, really a solid fragrance and it's one of those that's kind of under the radar right now and I absolutely love it. At number 20. Number 19 is a mainstay on my top 20 list for winter and fall. Last year made at number 15. This year at number 19. This is from the House of Burberry. Always in my top 20 list. This is the Christmas Tree in a Bottle. Burberry London. Ah, oh, this thing. Pine Tree meets Port Wine. Um, it's got like a booziness but also very green, uh, very woody. Um, lots of spice in here, uh, very, very nicely done. Great seasonal fragrance for Christmas time, Thanksgiving. Um, again, I'm gonna mention this again. I love wearing this with wool. Um, I like wearing a suit and I have like a wool scarf or I'm wearing a pea coat. I'm gonna be wearing this and this blends so well with that. I don't know why, but with wool, it's really good. It's warming. Um, it's not the best in the longevity projection uh, category for depending on your skin, but for me, it's not very good. Um, I like wearing this indoors quite a bit, so definitely a, a excellent fragrance for uh, this time of year for winter. As always, at number 19, Burberry London. At number 18, a newcomer on this top 20 list. Again, another newcomer, another discontinued fragrance. I know someone's going to comment saying, what's with all the discontinued fragrances? I'm waiting for your comment, buddy. Um, this is from the house of Christian Lacroix, my scent of the day today. <laughs> the Home Depot of the fragrance game, Tumult by Christian Lacroix. This one deserves a little bit of shine this year, and I decided, you know what, I've been wearing a lot of it this year, and I'm absolutely loving it. Um, I'm not going to be loving it when I uh, run out of this juice. It's quite expensive right now. Um, this one, Cedar, Cedar, Cedar is the name of the game with this guy. There's a lot more notes in here. I believe there's a plum note in here. Um, there's incense, a little bit of that, but mostly what you get from this is Cedar, guys. There's tons of it. Um, it's not really that complex. It's very linear. Um, very good for uh, longevity. This is like six to eight hours, easy. Projection, not so much. It kind of reminds me of Gucci Puram 1, um, Hinoki by uh, Christian, uh, Christian Dior. Um, Hinoki from Comme des Garçons, um, very woody, warm, uh, and dry fragrance. Really, really nice from uh, Christian Lacroix. Actually, their crown jewel in the fragrance game for them. At number 18, 
At number 17, this guy, I've been loving this guy uh, the past couple of years, just loving it. It's from the house of Yves Saint Laurent. This is actually not their only guy in this top 20. This guy, M7, always a, a really solid fragrance for me. Um, again, uh, my sweet tooth kind of coming out with this one. Not that M7 is sweet, but there's like a cherry vibe in here that really just uh, hits the right spot, I guess. Soft oud, um, very woody scent with a cherry vibe with a backdrop of ambery powderiness. Um, longevity and projection, you guys know this is beast mode. Um, this fragrance is absolutely killer in the winter. Love it. Number 17. At number 16, another discontinued gem. <laughs> This is from, from the house of Escada. This guy, man, I haven't seen this guy in a top 20 list for me in a long time. Um, it's kind of coming back. Um, it's got like kind of like that cherry vibe that you get in M7. You get this in Magnetisma from Escada at number 16. The Dr. Pepper, the fragrance game, might be. It has a cola-like vibe. Some people say grape cola. Um, yeah, very sweet, mysterious, dark. Um, Going out clubbing, this one's absolutely crazy just because it's it's different from what other people are going to be wearing. The one millions, the Lamals, the angel men's of the world. Um, this one can, uh, longevity and projection, very good on this one. That's why it's a good clubbing scent. Very different in the game. Um, harder to find now, but still solid. And one of my favorites right now um, this winter, I'm absolutely loving magnetism. At number 16. At number 15, again, my sweet tooth is coming out again. This fragrance I always recommend to teens and uh, college kids that are looking for something that is uh, fun, but they can wear it all the time. Um, I really think this one's kind of versatile for the fragrance. This guy from the house of Diesel. I haven't had a Diesel fragrance in the top 20 since I first started in 2009. This one, my favorite from Diesel, Fuel for Life. I know the only the Brave fans are going to be cringing, but um, I really like the sweet raspberry vibe in Fuel for Life. Um, it's very uh, unique. There's a backbone of anise and lavender in here. Um, it's actually well-constructed, well-balanced. Longevity and projection is very good for me and Diesel Fuel for Life. Something that I would uh, definitely check out, especially in Europe. I don't think too many people are wearing this in Europe, and I think you'd be standing out instead of wearing one million. Uh, but Fuel for Life, I'm absolutely loving this fragrance this year. Finally, uh, coming back in uh, my top 20 lists. At number 14, it's from the house of Chanel, their only entry in this top 20 list this year. This guy, an oldie but a goodie, Egoist. I believe it made my last year's list. I'm thinking it was probably number 12 of 13, I remember. So around the same uh, rating. So number 14 here this year, Warm Cinnamon. This is probably, the cinnamon is what makes it for me. Yeah, uh, Sandalwood, there's a little bit of rose. It's very different, really dark, well-balanced, of course, like all Chanel's do. Um, but it's very, um, I believe it's actually daring for 2013, this fragrance. It's really not up what Chanel usually does for men's fragrances, really safe sense. This one's kind of daring in 2013, and I love wearing this one in the winter especially. Uh, very good longevity and projection with this one too at number 14. At 13, <laughs> this one again, kind of coming back, creeping in my top 20 again. Um, this guy from Hypnose, this is of course Hypnose Um. Um, absolutely gorgeous bottle, guys. Um, I haven't spoke about this for a while now. Um, very aromatic start. Yeah, very aromatic start. Um, kind of has like that refreshing violet leaf lavender combo coming out with a little bit of bergamot, I believe, is, is in here in the start. Um, but don't get confused. Don't think this is going to be very aromatic or, or fresh. I mean, it really darkens, and it darkens really quick with the lavender and the amber dry down. Um, really nice. Um, I really think this is like a really classy scent. I, I like wearing this with the suit. Um, very, very nicely done. And I like wearing this at night out. Um, again, longevity and projection is pretty good on this guy too. Um, uh, at number 13, at number 12, one of my favorite fragrances of all time. This is from the house of Yves Saint Laurent, their second fragrance bottle in this top 20 list. This guy, La Nuit de L'Homme, um, probably one of my favorites for winter, um, obviously. At uh, number 12, it, last year I believe it made at number nine, so still solid. Cardamom, that sweet tonka in here. Very dark, mysterious scent. Um, nicely blended, a standout. And uh, again, Melfs and Gelfs, man. Um, this thing does, does the trick. La Nuit de l'Homme, very nicely done. Very well blended also. At number 12. Now at number... All right guys, let's round out this uh, bottom half of this top 20 list at number 11. 
I believe this is this guy's first um, real mention in a top 20 list. Um, highly deserves a, a mention in any top 20 list. Um, it, it's not really, it's a fragrance that I don't reach out for that much, but this year it's, it's getting its play and it's getting uh, some love in my top 20 list here. And this is from the house of Givenchy. This is their classic in the men's game. You can't mention Givenchy without naming this fragrance. This is Givenchy's Pie again. Um, this guy, uh, of course, uh, popular for men and women alike. Women like wearing this too. If you have a sweet tooth like me, and you like vanilla, like me, <laughs> this is going to be one of the, your favorites uh, in the designer game. Uh, no, no if, and, or buts about it. This is one of the best in the designer game. Longevity and projection, very solid, and that's why it's good in the winter. Um, this one kind of gives me different areas of vanilla, which is why I like it. And um, very comforting, it's very strong, and can last for ages. So definitely a, a great scent for winter time. Now let's go back to some more vanilla based scents. Let's go at number 10. This guy hasn't seen a top 20 list in a while too. Um, this guy from the house of Bulgari. This is Bulgari Black, the hockey puck of the fragrance game. <laughs> now of course I mentioned vanilla it does have a wallop of vanilla, especially in the dry down. This guy of course, vanilla tea. Strange little uh, rubber tire note in this fragrance. Um, very, very beautifully complex in a way, kind of linear in a way also. Um, well balanced and I think this is uh, probably one of the best from uh, the Hustle Bulgari. Very, very daring scent. Unisex, but uh, really well done. Really enjoy that one, especially this winter at number 10. At number 9 is from the house of Christian Ziar. This is not their only fragrance in this top 20 list, but they're doing very well in this top 20 list because um, they have two fragrances in this top 10, so that means they, they did well. This guy, no stranger to any of my top 20 lists, I believe it made my number one fall for designer this year, or last year in 2012. It's making it, uh, I think it was number four last year in my winter list, It and it is number nine this year. Zior um, Intense. Now, as you can see, proof is in the pudding. <laughs> I wear this guy. <laughs> I wear him a lot. Um, vanilla, cocoa, enwrapped iris, sweet, well balanced, man, um, longevity and projection up there. Um, I could say beast mode, yeah, <laughs> very, very nice fragrance. Um, one of the best from Dior. Um, I absolutely love this guy. Uh, this winter, again, wearing a lot of this stuff at number nine. At number eight, last year's number three. This guy from the house of Jean-Paul Gaultier. This guy is a mainstay since I was a teenager. Le Mans. <laughs> this guy's not going away. <laughs> and number eight. Um, every time I wear this, I, it brings me back how versatile Le Mans is. You know, everybody says it's a clubbing scent. It's only for, you know, winter and fall. Nah, man. This stuff is, you can wear it every single season. Um, in the winter, this thing shines. Um, longevity and projection, beast mode. I know a lot of people are saying that this got reformed and uh, it's not beast mode anymore. I'm gonna have to check that out. Um, lavender, mint, lots of vanilla, and I'm loving that vanilla in this fragrance. Top seller across the world, but I don't care. I'm gonna wear it at number eight. At number seven, a freaking bottle that you guys probably don't know about. This fragrance right here, I think it's his first time in a top 20 list also. This is from the house of Paul Smith. Now I've been wearing a lot of this and this is uh, this deserves some love and I'm going to let you guys know about this one. This one is of course Paul Smith Man. A little bottle right here. Now I bought this I believe in 2012. So this is a newish bottle to my collection. And at number seven, look at it. It's being, you know, there's a lot of good fragrances behind it right now. Le Mans, the Autumn Intense. Uh, Bulgari Black, so on and so forth. So this is excellent stuff, guys. Paul Smith Man, lots of Tonka. There's Iris in here. Anise, Violet Leaf, Incense, well-balanced, well-constructed. Man, um, this is compared to Dior Um. Yes, the original, the vintage. I'm comparing this to Dior Um Intense. Now, <laughs> I'm not going to start no hoopla, but I would say... You know, if you like the Autumn Intense, smell this. Um, it's not, it's not a clone, but um, it definitely has that iris note in it. 
very nicely done, and I'm being careful with my words because I don't really want to say this is a replacement for the Ottoman tennis. Not even close, but uh, definitely around the same genre. Very nicely done by Paul Smith, man. I'm at number seven. At number six, a mainstay in my top ten uh, winter list. Um, this is from the House of Teddy Muglier. They got two fragrances in this top ten, as always. Um, this guy was number five last year and it's going to be number six this year, not slipping too much. This is Pure Malts, the Whiskey Berry Angel Men, Skeleton Boozy Angel Men, that's what I call it. Um, very unique in the designer game, still very unique and always going to be uh, on top of my list just because it's so unique out here. Um, I absolutely love this fragrance. Longevity and projection, pretty good, excellent on this fragrance number six. At number five, um, this is uh, from the House of Christian Dior. This one, uh, Fahrenheit Absolute. Like I've kind of ignored my original Fahrenheit, and I've been coming out and grabbing this one more and more. I believe it made my fall. I could be wrong, but I think it made my fall for 2012. Also, at number five, um, it's got a small backbone of the original Fahrenheit, but don't really expect the original Fahrenheit in this. It, it has like a skeleton of it, kind of like I say with Pure Malt and Angel Men. Um, it's really really darkened up with uh, incense, myrrh, oud, um, really dark fragrance, really kind of scary, something I would wear uh, for a funeral to be honest with you guys, um, very very dark fragrance, Fahrenheit absolutely gotta get your nose on this, great for winter, great, absolutely crazy for winter. At number four, this guy again another mainstay, um, the darkest vetiver based fragrance on the market today, was number seven last year, number four this year. I'm loving this juice. Encre Noir by Lalique. Ah, beautiful, wet, but yet dry vetiver in here. Great longevity projection. Um, absolutely a gem in the designer game. Um, you just gotta smell this fragrance. Very out of the norm. Um, that's what I like about these. some of these designer fragrances. You know, there's you know, people are trying to copy these fragrances, but they're really unique. You know, Ancre Noir, Fahrenheit Absolute, Pure Malt, um, Bulgari Black, The Autumn Intense. You know, they're very unique in the designer game. There's nothing quite like them. Um, they have really good projection and longevity, most of them. And um, just something that's unique to a nose like mine. I absolutely love them. Ancre Noir at number four. God, I love that vetiver. At number three, oof, one of the classics from the Hermes line. This one. Man, um, this one I bought last year, 2012. Um, I've had my nose on this for quite a while. I finally got it in my collection. Um, I'm really loving this this winter, as you can see at number three. This is Bel Ami, an 80s baby. <laughs> this one needs some shine on YouTube. This thing is absolutely bonkers in the fragrance game. Um, as far as the designer goes, this, uh, they don't make them like this no more. <laughs> Um, this is Pure Distance M's cousin. Um, I really think they took the backbone of Belle Amie and tried to put it into Pure Distance M. So all you Pure Distance M lovers, that really super expensive fragrance, God, get, get your nose on this. Nice big bold leather based fragrance. It's dry, it's warming, it's well balanced, well blended, does very well on my skin. Um, always keeps me entertained. Belle Amie, finally have a bottle, I'm very happy, as you can see at number three on my list. Alright, my top two, number two was last year's number one. Yes, we're getting a new number one this year. It's hard to hold on to that number one spot, especially in the designer game. This one, again, getting a lot of play from me. Hey, it's number two. It's from the house of Gucci. This is, of course, Gucci Puram One. Um, this bottle, very heavy, very beautiful bottle by Gucci. Um, what can I say about this fragrance that I haven't said? Woods, incense. That's your, your major players in Gucci Puram, very warming. God, it's a beautiful scent. Um, this one, you gotta get your nose on it. Um, some say it's kind of mature. Uh, kind of agree, but you know what? Um, if you like dry fragrances, you love cedar, you like incense, um, very daring scent. Um, they don't make them like this anymore. <laughs> I'm gonna keep saying that. At number two, absolutely stunning fragrance. Gucci put on one. Now my number one. My number one was number two last year, so they just flipped. <laughs> This is from the House of Dede Muglier. This one, of course, the originator, Angel Men. This thing should be, uh, it's number one. Why is it number one? Well, first and foremost, they don't sell Muglier fragrances in my hometown. This thing is absolutely daring. It's different. Um, longevity and projections, beast mode. 
Um, it keeps me entertained. It's unique. Uh, I can't say enough. And that's what you want in a designer fragrance. You want it under 100 bucks, and you want it. You want it to be daring. I really like unique uh, gourmand lovers. You got to check this out. Longevity and projections through the roof. Um, if you haven't smelt it, get a sample. If you have smelt it and you don't like it, because I know it's going to happen. I know a lot of people will not like this from you know your first sample of this fragrance to your maybe your fifth or sixth, and then maybe it's going to click. Maybe it'll never click. But when it does click, oh, does it ever click? <laughs> Number one, Angel Man. Um, this is the designer's game. Um, they thought of me when they made this fragrance. A winter-based fragrance that just won't quit. At number one, respectively. YouTube, thank you for watching my top 20. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you agree. Maybe you disagree. Maybe I'm missing something. Let me know. All right, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed.